Hi everyone, Angus Campbell here, Monday the 27th of February 2023. Right, as promised, at last we're back on the Fury SS to hopefully put pay to um, some gearbox gremlins that we've had. So, just to recap, we... We got this running last year, some time ago now, and just with a few running tests in the garage, we uh, we had a few things, a few um, issues to address. Um, the first related to a couple of oil link leaks. One was. from the cam chain tunnel head joint just here and we found that with the way that that secures the, the securing screws that are inside the tunnel here they weren't clamping down the head properly so we've, we've addressed that we hope uh, remediated that the other was a leak from the oil feed pipe, the base of the oil feed pipe up to the head. So this is under pressure and there's, you can't see it very well, but there's a, a nut with an olive inside down the bottom here and that hadn't been clamped up and it's extremely awkward to get to with a starter motor. So I did make a tool up to try and get in there. There, you can, you can just see the nut there at the end of my finger because you've got uh, the base of the barrels here and all sorts going on. There's the nut. So you can see, uh, oops, you can see the sort of, there it is, problems trying to get in there with some sort of spanner. So I butchered a spanner and made up a tool to get in there and we've got another quarter of a turn on that. So hopefully that's addressed that. But the main issue was the fact that just undertaking some testing to go through the gearbox, we couldn't get it past second gear. And um, stripping this down, what we found was that some time ago now when we were ma manufacturing, or we got some gears manufactured, we used probably an incorrect revision of a gear because we found that third gear lay shaft and fourth gear lay shaft were incorrect in that they only had six dogs instead of seven but also the dogs have worn badly and that's because we found that these two gears are not hardened and I don't think the lay shaft is hardened either on doing a bit of a file test on it so what we had to do was to get some gears made up from luckily factory or copies of factory drawings and we've got a company to make them up but that it took an awful long while um, probably eight months instead of eight weeks but we've got them third gear lay shaft fourth gear lay shaft to factory drawings from the last revision which was p30 which is the project number revision c so what we're going to do then is rebuild the gearbox and the state we're in at the moment is that the main shaft and all its gears are in the cam plate's still in because we've taken out the lay shaft and its gears which you can do on this gear gearbox and actually you can, you can see in the bottom of there bits of metal that come off those dogs so we've got a bit of cleaning up to do nasty as well so we've got what we've got on the bench here are uh, the original lay shaft with its gears but we've also got a spare main shaft and main shaft gears and some of the original gears for the lay shaft and the new gears so what we can do here is we can build up a complete gearbox here, uh, gearbox uh, clusters here, 
and then take the lay shaft set over to the bike because I've now had sufficient gears made up so I've got a complete spare set of clusters, gear clusters for the gearbox. And what we can do at the same time is we can swap out that lay shaft with a proper hardened one that um, I've managed to secure from a, a well-known um, BSA addict in Belgium, uh, Gilbert uh, Bredemus, and we did a bit of a swaps part um, and managed so uh, he was kind enough to swap um, on his side a lay shaft and, and a main shaft, which I didn't have a spare main shaft. So it does mean that we'll have uh, a, a spare complete gearbox. So what we need to do first is just assemble the clusters here. In fact, a complete gearbox, if you like, which we can do with the aid of the parts book because they, uh, they are quite easy to identify these gears. And then that will enable us then to transfer the lay, the lay shaft set with its lay shaft into uh, the box on the bench. So let's assemble these uh, together first and I'll bring you back. Right, there we go. Um, all sort of loosely put together with uh, the new requisite gears. So what we've got here then is, this is uh, a spare main shaft and spare set of clusters. This is a spare set of selector forks and the selector fork spindle. And this is the lay shaft out of the bike with the replacement gear. And this is a spare lay shaft with a spare cluster, lay shaft cluster. So what we'll end up is, is that this lay shaft and cluster of gears is going in the bike and that lay shaft and cluster and this main shaft and cluster and the selector forks and the spindle are all spare <coughs> because the main shaft, selector forks and spindle uh, for the bike are, are still in there. Let me just show you. Because we were able to move things about without disturbing the, the main shaft. There's one selector fork in there and uh, the other two and the spindle down there. Now, um, <clears throat> just to point out the things you've got to watch out for again when you're trying to put together prototypes is the fact that um, sometimes you come across components that aren't quite finished. So that happened in this case. So one of the gears that I hadn't replaced, because I've got a couple of, is uh, this one, which I think is number 27 there. So yeah, second gear lay shaft, 28 teeth. Now, this one has got, um, engages with dogs in third gear when the gear is selected. But if, if the dogs aren't engaged, this one spins freely on the lay shaft. And as such, um, it relies upon obviously an oil feed to enable that to, to spin freely. So in addition to, okay, you can't see this, very, let me take this off now. Right here. Can I get that off? I haven't pushed it on yet because that's a press fit that in gear. There we go. Now you see this has been finished so it's got grooves on this side because uh, this presses up against the thrust washer so it has to oil that. It's also in the centre there I think you can see there's grooves machined in so that um, you can guarantee that oil is being spread across the faces and also can you see just there a little tiny hole has been drilled there and I believe on the other side maybe I'm wrong was that another one there yeah there we are um, for again oil to be fed down to those mating services there so that's correct. 
However, I thought I had two of these. There's the other one here. Looks fine, except on cleaning up the uh, centre there, one, it's not quite the right diameter. There's no little holes drilled in the gear and it's not finished on this side either and there's no groove in the centre. This one, this gear is unfinished. That needs finishing and it's and it's probably not hardened then either. So, and I nearly put that on. So, be aware of, of what you're dealing with and obviously the the parts book and the documentation I've got doesn't show you little details like this, like that, and the inner surface there. So we're a bit lucky there, to be honest, that I had two to compare. So right, what we'll do now then is uh, we'll transfer this lay shaft and cluster over to the bike. Uh, I will clean this up a little more. Some of these need, uh, we'll get them on the on the wire wheel, get them all, everything cleaned up so it's uh, spick and span. And then when we press certain gears on, we've got to include these thrust washers, and that's a split thru thru thrust washer as well. One of them goes in there. I think one of them goes on the outside as well, up against that in between there. You'll see them, um, sorry about the shadow, get the hand out of the way and that might help. So there's, there's the split one. Is that right? No, that's the complete one and there's the split one there, yeah. So either side of second gear. So you will leave though, <coughs> make sure you fit those. The other thing as well you may have noticed is, uh, is that these are spare selector forks, but you'll notice that with respect to the nib that goes into um, the um, cam plate. Um, these should have that steel bush so the brass doesn't wear. These two haven't got them. So again, things like that you've got to make sure are fitted, otherwise you're going to have all sorts of problems selecting gear. The ones um, that we've uh, used in the bike before, etc. I've got them fitted. I nearly thought they didn't there, but there we go, yeah. Then I've checked the one inside as well. So three selector forks. Right, let's get this over to the bike and then we'll uh, start the uh, unenviable task of uh, trying to insert this with the, um, with the main shaft in place. It'll be a bit fiddly, but we can do it. Right, there's the lay shaft and its gears laid out all cleaned up. Uh, third gear, already, um, I've already slidden on from, from that side. It won't go on from this side as the, the grooves taper out on the splines there. So what you can see then is at the end of the main spline there this washer goes on sorry thrust washer yet then we've got the second gear i think this is which slides over that spline there and onto its spindle and then those dogs will be selected he says, hopefully. Oh, it is a bit tight, that gear. There we go. <laughs> As the gear falls out. There we get the picture. There we go. That wasn't going on properly. There we go. That's better. And then in this groove here, before this final set of splines, goes this split thrust washer, and that split wash thrust wash 
that thrust washer is split because the uh, diameter of the shaft just in that groove there obviously smaller than the outer diameter of the splines here so you can't slide it on so push we'll push that split in then we put first gear on which is that indent indented side onto the split thrust washer so that leaves a nice flat side then on this side which butts up against a thrust bearing bronze thrust bearing then on the other side we have fourth gear which slides on this way round because it uses a common selector forked to third gear <laughs> here, here it does slide on there we go so there's one selector fork that goes in there and then finally fifth gear which honestly does slide on there so let me put all that lot together as well with the split thrust washer in there and then this gear which actually presses onto here it's quite a tight fit and then i'll bring you back once i've just finished putting this cluster together but yeah sorry about the strange camera angles working one-handed there it is lay shaft and cluster all together and the gears these two gears third and fourth slide with a selector fork which resides here I'm, I'm not too happy about it um, I'm no engineer but anyway let me try and explain so if the selection forks moves this way and engages fourth with fifth the dogs engage all the way but on the other side if you do it the other way let me try and do this with one hand. I need to slide, there we go, slide those two across as though the selector fork was moving to the right. There. Those dogs only engage so far, about two thirds, before they. this gear then pushes up against the thrust washer, which is inside here so you've got a thrust washer on the left hand side of this on the in internal side and then you've got this split thrust washer here which is in held in by this it means that this gear is nice and free to spin on its spindle with no or very little side to side movement which is what you want and if we were to reduce the thickness of the, th the thrust washer on the inside of here that would introduce play in this so I'm just going to do a, I'm no engineer I'm just going to do a bit of reading up on this because my understanding is that obviously if the dogs don't engage as fully as required then it might slip out of gear mind you having any gear higher than second gear at the moment is going to be a bonus and let me just do a bit, a bit of checking up on that I'm not sure Right, back again, it's two days later, and um, I'm not much further forward, really. So what I've done is, is I've tried to um, read up on the net, and uh, I can't find any relevant information with respect to um, sort of general specs about dogs. Lots of information about why uh, motorcycles and uh, sports cars, etc., um, sports saloons, racing cars, etc. use them rather than synchros. So I've learned a lot about that. But I'm still a bit concerned about the fact that um, that needs to engage further. I mean, it's not bad. It's probably two thirds. I'd like it to go a bit further though. And I'm, I've just been wondering whether, you know, the, the ability for this gear not to fully engage, that might be one of the original reasons why um, I couldn't select third gear because this needs to be pu pushed a bit further home uh, and 
the selector fork position there was probably preventing the, uh, the cam plate from twisting round further, which sits on the top. So I'm thinking that, you know, we've got an issue probably with the, uh, th the thrust washer that sits in there. And maybe also, you know, the split th thrust washer here, because I'm sure this sort of pinion gear, which is a, you know, a push fit on splines on the lay shaft, I'm sure that should go a little bit further on than that to actually cover the whole of that thrust washer. Or alternatively, again, that thrust washer might be a bit too thick. Um, and therefore, we might have to introduce a bit of side play on this gear, but I, I don't necessarily think that matters too much. Um, as long as, you know, it's fully home and en engaged properly in the dogs when this is moved across. The, uh, the, the thing is, that I've, I've also dug out the copies of the factory drawings set that I purchased years ago from Steve Sewell, who, who owns the drawings, and his set doesn't include any factory drawings for the thrust washers. And unfortunately, um, the thrust washers that are listed in the parts book, so that's 28 and 26. I have to turn the page on this because it's a photocopy, but I do have a, some originals inside. So 26, split thrust washer, lay shaft, 28. There's no you know dimensions given for for those washers, which is infuriating because elsewhere you'll see that they do give you know there's a washer that they give a dimension for. So that's a bit infuriating. So what I'm going to do is um, firstly um, I'm going to ask for um, anyone's help. People like Bob Rogerson, etc. If you're um, looking on on this and can provide any advice with respect to uh, your views on the way that these dogs engage, which I'm sure will be, yet yeah, they need to be more fully home than that, then that's fine. Um, what we'll do in the meantime is I'll just take this pinion off again, prise that off. We'll take that off and we'll have a look at those washers again. Um, and just do a bit of comparing with respect to the recess in this gear and also the thickness of the thrust washer behind there. Let's have a look at them. Right, um, apart again, and I'm no engineer, but I think I might have found the issue which would lend itself to an easy solution. So, just to recap... This gear here, third gear, slides along these splines to engage its dogs in, I think that's fourth gear. I can remember the second or fourth, I think it's fourth. There. Now, the problem we were having is that it didn't seem to be fully engaging. But, with the gears out, it does. And I'm happy with that. Now, the issue possibly is that in between the two of them, against the splines there, is this thrush washer. Now, this thrush washer then effectively sits in there. So it's the right ID, but it's got quite a big OD. And if you put it on third gear, sorry about my fingers and thumbs here, it doesn't go inside the lip. So I think this, the OD is correct, but I think the ID needs cutting down on this so it will go inside this ring. Where there is a groove for it. I think that's what the issue is. Now, the other one we were considering is this split thrust washer, which 
goes in here, which does fit in that groove and it's nice and snug. And that effectively goes in there on this fifth gear pinion, which slides onto those splines there, but it's fixed. This goes on there, it's a snug fit, and it stays there. And it's held in by this split washer on this side, thrust washer, but also this goes side goes up against a thrust bearing on the casing. So that's never going to move anywhere. So the other thing then was to... to Put these in here. And I think I think they're okay they're okay, but I think they're a little tiny bit too thick. Which would mean then that the whole lay shaft was proud at this end a little tiny bit which you wouldn't necessarily see too well because this end goes into uh, a blind ended needle bearing, needle roller bearing. So that's my, my thoughts guys on this. And as I say, I'm gonna end this as a part one on this, just to see in the next few days if um, any of you watching with more you know, engineering knowledge than me can shed some light and uh, or also confirm that I'm on the right track here before we start modifying the thrust washers, which obviously aren't going to be a big job to replace if thumb fisted me messes it up. So um, let's leave it there. Um, have a ponder but yeah look forward to any any feedback on this and uh, you know anything anything welcome because i'll be i'll be learning from it right let's end it there then with a, a fairly short one uh, for me and hopefully um when i get some feedback confirming things we'll uh, we'll take it from there get a consensus and we'll do a part two so thanks very much for uh watching as usual everybody thanks for subscriptions interest and comment and we'll see you all again soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.